Isaiah chapter 46, uh, verse 9. I'm going to read it for you out of the NIV, um, just because I think the translation is easiest to comprehend, and I found it anyway. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God, and there is none other. I am God, and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. I want to speak to you this morning on something that I titled, Living the End from the Beginning. Living the End from the Beginning. We've been talking um, last week, we started a new series, and we started talking about God's design for our life. God has a plan for our life. We didn't kind of just end up on planet Earth and we're kind of meandering through things and making our way till we finally get to the point where we come to the end of our life and we think, well, what is that all about? Was there anything more consequential to my life? I think that God is intentional in everything that he does and he knows each one of us and he's got a perfect plan for each one of our lives. And we spoke a little bit about that last week and we, we began to get into that. Um, but I think what's really important for us is, and sometimes where we struggle is because we are natural beings and we live in a natural world, we have a tendency to take natural paradigms and apply them to our life. And we take that and we apply it to our spiritual relationship as well. And so rather than engaging with life from God's paradigm and from his perspective, what we do is we look for God and we try to understand God from our, through our filter. And sometimes it isn't always easy. And God has to take us on a journey to get us to see him in the context of who he is, not who we think he is. God is, God was before anything. God lives in a dimension and God lives in a realm called the kingdom of God. That's, that's the place where God lives. And everything that happens from God's point of view happens in the kingdom first. It, it's initiated and has its birth. It has its conception in the kingdom. When it came to creation, it was exactly the same. So when God had a plan and his intention was he wanted to create humanity and he wanted to create the earth and he wanted to create the waters and he wanted to create dry land and he wanted to create stars and he wanted to create sunlight and he wanted to create the sun and he wanted to create... He wanted to create everything. And what he did was, he sat and God considered what he wanted to create. And God created everything that he intended to create inside of himself, inside of the kingdom. And when everything that was to be created was completed in the spiritual dimension within God, then what he said was fine. Now that I know exactly, down to the finest detail, what it is that I'm going to give expression to, he started creation. It was already complete in God in the spiritual dimension. And what he did was, he said, fine, now it's time to take something that is already completed, that is already finished, and I'm going to take it from the unseen world, and I'm going to make it visible. I'm going to create a material world. I'm going to give something form and substance. So what he did was he went back to what was created in himself and he spoke into existence the worlds that we know. He spoke everything into existence. When things were given form, he had a look at them and he said, at the end of creation, everything was very good. What is his template? His template was everything that was already created on the inside of him. He said, yes, that's exactly the way I intended it to be. What looks out there is exactly what I intended from in here. It is a perfect mirror image. It is a good expression of things. What is the point? The point is, God completes the end before he starts something. God completes the end before he starts something. Because God exists in the spirit realm, what God does, God creates something like creation on the inside of him. And when that is created and it's given an idea as to what he wants it to be, he gives it form and expression in a natural world. That's how he created. He spoke it into existence. 
but it existed in him before it was ever had form. Does that make sense? Yeah. Lots of funny looks on faces. <laughs> it's an important concept. It's an important concept because the point of it is this. If God completed the end before he starts something, what it means is God completed your life before you were conceived. God completed your life before you were conceived. God wrote the book on you before you were ever given form. Remember we used the example of Jeremiah last week when God said to Jeremiah, I knew you before you were conceived. I set you apart. I appointed you to be a prophet to the nations. What was he saying? I had written the book on your life before you were ever conceived. He had finished the creation of Jeremiah before he started Jeremiah's life. And what he was saying to Jeremiah was, everything that you're going to walk into, everything that you're going to experience is going to be preordained by me because it's been set in place by me. God created your life and has finished your life before you were born. What's so exciting about that is that everything that constitutes your future basically is part of God's past. Everything that you're going to walk into, God has already been there. So the next chapter of your life, and whatever the next chapter of your life looks like, God has already been there, and he understands it because he's already created that for you. And so when we step into the next chapter of our life, what God is really doing is God is extending an invitation to us to sit and say, everything that you need to give definition, to give understanding, to give you a, a comprehension about the next chapter of your life is going to be found in me because I am the author of your life. If you want to know what it looks like, if you're wanting insight, if you're wanting wisdom, if you're wanting whatever it is to make the next chapter of your life happen, the place to come is to me. God takes things from the unseen world and he introduces them and makes them visible in the natural world. That's what God does. That's how God works. Our life story has been written for God, but it's written in a spiritual dimension. We're living out a practical, experiential existence that's in a natural realm. What we do is we have an inclination to go to our environment to try and have a look at and define where we should go and how we should live. And what he's saying to us is if you have an appreciation and if you have a revelation of the fact that your book has already been written, that the end existed before you started, you would know that the place to go to find the, the insights that you need to move into the next stage of your life is in him because he knows what it is. He's already been there. You're exploring. You're moving into something you know nothing about. And he's sitting saying, if you want to know more about it, come to me because I'll give it to you. He is the author and the finisher. What's quite exciting is this. There are a lot of people who sit there and they say, you know what? I don't know if there was an intentionality behind my life. I don't know if God intended for me to be born with any kind of purpose. If God had any preconceived plan and intention for my life. What I can tell you is this. From what I've just told you, the moment you were born, it is evidence of the fact that you were created to start something that's already been finished. You were created to start something that's already been finished. We need to find out from him, tell me the purpose of my life. Tell me the plan. Tell me the destination. Where am I going? What was the intention behind all of this? Because when I get to that place and I get to that point of understanding, I move to a place where I, I have a sense of comfort and confidence. Why is my confidence in God? Because I know he's already been there. You wonder why God doesn't panic. You wonder why God doesn't worry. Because God said, I've already finished the book. I know what happens in the end. We worry because we don't know how the chapter is going to end. 
We worry because we step into a new chapter and things begin to wobble and things happen and things are unexpected and things come into our life that we least expect and we have disappointments and we look at things and we think things shouldn't be that way. What we don't realize is the fact that it's easy for us to get worried and concerned about things, to get anxious about things, to be be panic struck about things because we don't know what the next chapter holds. But the more we're in relationship with him, the more we find ourselves in a place where we are are living out of the unseen and pulling that into our natural realm. It gives us a sense of confidence that he holds the future. And I can step into that with confidence because he's one step ahead of me all of the way. He's opening things up and he's revealing things to me every step that I take. God has predestined a plan for each of our lives. And each of us has got a perfect plan that God has put in place for us. But we make a choice as to whether we walk in his plan or not. That's the difference. Although God has got a perfect plan for our life, the the final choice as to whether we elect to go God's way or another way falls with us. He's given us something incredibly powerful called free will. The ability to choose. He even says to us, I've set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. He's saying, I've set before you a path. I've set before you a perfect plan. And I want you to walk in my plan for life. But if you don't walk in my plan, you can choose to walk a different way. If you choose to walk a different way, you create a different future. It's not to say that God didn't create one for you. He did. But our choices take us in a different direction. I elected do not to go God's way, but to live differently. It comes down to basic expressions in everyday decisions. We think it's just the big decisions about life that count. It's everyday decisions. How do you decide how you want to handle that person in your life? Out of the way you feel, out of the way you think, or do you sit and say, God, tell me what your purpose is here. What is the way that I'm supposed to act and behave in this situation? Because I'm adjusting my life. I'm adjusting my decisions. I'm adjusting my behaviors. I'm adjusting my outlook on life to sit and say, I understand that there's a perfect plan and I want to step into it all of the time. And I'm making modifications in terms of where I am so that I can step into what is your plan for my life. The challenges of our life lead us into purpose. The challenges of our life direct us to purpose. I think almost everybody has a cell phone nowadays. The funny thing about cell phones is that most people use them, many people use them, for making calls, receiving calls, and sending texts. Three things. Your cell phone can do a hundred things. But we do three. We live on 3% of its potential. It can do a whole lot more. But we've never placed a demand on potential because we've never had to. So we're happy with our three little things. And then suddenly one day we're at home at nine o'clock at night and it's the middle of winter, and the electricity goes out, and we have no flashlight. And we suddenly go, hold on, I think, I think my cell phone could do something like that. And we rummage around, and we go and find our cell phone, and we get our cell, and we find, and you know what? It's got a flashlight on it. It was the challenges that brought us to a place where we started to explore potential, and we suddenly discovered something that we could use. And all of a sudden, I'm living off 4% of my 100% capacity. (laughs) And then I realize I can't wake up every morning any time that I like because now I'm out of college and I've got a job. And so I need to get up in the morning. I need to make sure that I set an alarm so that I'm up and ready and I'm on my way to work. And then I realize I don't have an alarm clock. And I'm looking around and I'm thinking, what is it? And then I realize that my cell phone has got an alarm clock. And I go and I find it and it works. And I've just upped myself to 5% of my potential. Why? Because circumstances demanded something of me and I recognized the fact that I didn't have the ability to fulfill that. 
And so what I started doing was I started exploring potential to sit and say, can you help me remedy this issue? Can you help me fix where I am right now? That's what the circumstances of life do. The circumstances of life confront us and they sit and say to us, talk to me about your purpose. You want to deal with this? You want to overcome the challenge? You want to deal with the issue that's confronting you? What are you going to use to deal with this? And God uses the circumstances of life and the challenges of life to make a demand on our purpose. Because when it makes a demand on our purpose and suddenly I recognize that my training and my ability and my knowledge and everything that I have is not going to take me through this, then I sit and say, fine, you know what? Let me start to explore my potential in him. And I start to discover things that he's put on the inside of me that I never placed a demand on before because there was never a need to. People don't grow when life is comfortable. People don't grow when things are just happy and hunky-dory. We laugh and we have fun and it's good. People grow when there are tough times. People grow when there's a demand placed on you that says, I'm looking for purpose and I'm looking for you to be able to come up and deliver something to be able to overcome what's confronting you. And suddenly I start saying, you know what? Let me go digging into potential. Let me go digging into potential. David, his brothers are off at war. He's a young shepherd boy. And his father says to him, I want you to take these bits and pieces and take them off to your brothers. He says, fine. He's just going to give his brothers some food, give them a bit of encouragement. He's on a journey and he gets to a place and all of a sudden his life is confronted by a challenge that he never expected, that he never anticipated, that he never prepared for. And he stands there and he sees a giant in front of the entire army. All of these trained military people. And not one of them is prepared to confront the giant. And he has a look at the challenge in front of him and he watches what's taking place. And the giant is standing there and the giant is blaspheming God. And the giant is mocking God. The giant, Goliath wasn't just mocking God. What Goliath was doing was mocking his purpose. What Goliath was saying was, you think you're so great in God, let's see what you can do. That's what the challenges of life very often come up and do to us. They slap you in the face. You think that you're a kingdom citizen? You think that you're able to overcome things? Let's see. And it calls you to the battlefield. In the natural, the last person that should have been confronting Goliath was David. Because he was a boy. He was untrained. He was inexperienced. He wasn't a, a soldier. Of everybody who was out there, he was the one who should not have been confronting Goliath. Why did he confront Goliath? Because there was a reality in his life and he had tapped into something inside of himself where he knew about the greater one on the inside than he is in the world. Amen. And when you're able to tap into the unseen world, when you're able to tap into your purpose and your potential, you're able to make claims against your potential that encourage you, that position you, that give you all you need to overcome. The reason that he overcame had nothing to do with the fact that he was a good shot. It had nothing to do with the fact that he had a good slingshot in his hand. If anything, that's the worst thing to deal with on the battlefield. The reason he overcome was because he understood a basic principle out of his relationship with God. That God said, you know what? I will never leave you nor forsake you. He understood that from his history where he had tackled bears and he had tackled lions. He was like, you know what? I know where I've been and I know that the greater one was inside of me. And I know that the greater one brought me through. And this is just another expression of that. Amen. He was discovering something on the inside of him that was positioning him to walk into his purpose. What is his purpose? His purpose was to be victorious. His purpose was to be successful. His purpose was to be an overcomer in that situation. 
And when you're an overcomer in the situation and you kill Goliath, all of a sudden what opens up for you is destiny. He wasn't pursuing destiny. He's fighting a giant. He's fighting Goliath. He's not thinking destiny. He's just walking out purpose. When we start to walk out purpose, destiny reveals itself. When you discover purpose in every situation of your life, when you discover what is God's purpose here, Father, because I understand what your purpose is, I understand that I need your resources, those things that are available to me in the unseen realm. And Father, you know what? I know that when you created from the unseen realm, you took responsibility for taking those things and speaking them into existence. And when he created you, what he said to you was this. I have a plan for your life. I have a destination for your life. And I'm inviting you to walk into it. And when you begin to walk into it, what ends up happening is he says, the responsibility for creation in your existence moves to you. The responsibility for taking things from the unseen realm and bringing them into the natural rests with us, not with him. If you, my people, perish for a lack of knowledge, when we don't know what he wants to do, we have no idea what to introduce. If we don't know who we are, we don't know what our purpose is. And we walk into a situation where there's a whirlwind and there's all this stuff happening in life. And we're trying to get clarity and we're trying to get a focus and we're trying to know where it is that I need to go to. And unless I'm at a place where I understand purpose, I don't know how I'm supposed to influence. It's when we begin to walk out our purpose that what ends up happening is our destination begins to reveal itself. And we walk into that. It doesn't always come easy. In fact, it's going to be hard. The kingdom suffers violence and the violence take it by force. What is it talking about? It's saying the things that he has established for you and the things that he's created for you to move into are things that want to manifest themselves in your life. What he's saying is, I'm looking for you to make a demand on those things. But when you begin to step into them, it's going to fly in the face of so many things that make us comfortable. What he wants to step us into very often flies in the face of what your circumstance looks like. And your circumstance is going to be yelling and screaming and shouting and carrying on like Goliath against the, what the kingdom wants to do. There is opposition. There's opposition that comes from us. Because I don't think that. And when I look at the situations, I start to have a look and I think to myself, you know what? I'm really not an armored man and I'm not a, 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 a great warrior and I don't have any experience and I don't have formal training and I don't have a sword and I don't have a shield and I'm not big like a light. What ends up happening? My thinking wars against the kingdom. Well, I don't feel like it. You understand this is a really scary place for me to be. Why am I the one who has to do it? Yes, there's trepidation. Yes, I might be nervous. Yes, I may have a look at those things and there may be a side to me that's still fearful. The fact of the matter is, it's warring against the kingdom and it's sitting saying, what do you want to do? Are you going to let it overcome the kingdom or are you going to lean into the kingdom and step into what I've directed you to do? I think many people miss God's opportunity because the warfare against the kingdom, we lean to our own understanding. We lean to our own emotions. We create excuses in life. Well, it's not really my job. I'm not part of the army. Why should I have to do that? And what ends up happening is we lose the opportunity to step into purpose. And when you lose the opportunity to step into, to, into purpose and have influence, what ends up happening is you don't open the next chapter of your life. We don't grow. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Everything that God has provided for you to be successful exists in heavenly places. 
It exists in the unseen realm. What he's saying to you is this. Yes, I predestined your days, and I know what it is that you need to walk into. Yes, I have purpose for your life, and yes, I have an ultimate destination for your life. And what I've done in order for you to make sure that that's successful and for you to walk into the accomplishment of that is I've given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. I've given you all spiritual blessings, which are contained where? In heavenly places. In the unseen realm. He's saying everything that you need to succeed, everything that you need to overcome is contained in the unseen. The responsibility for us as people is to get connected to the unseen realm. Because what he's looking for us to do is make a demand on the potential, on all that exists in the unseen realm and bring it into the visible realm. Don't be conformed, be transformed. What is he saying? Stop being natural. Everybody's natural. Everybody's living by what they see and what they think and what they anticipate and what they plan and what they're doing and what they... And God's saying, stop it. If you want to know your future, you want to know your plan, get into the unseen. Take from the unseen and introduce it into your world. When we introduce it into our world, it begins to change circumstances. It begins to change things. We think that our blessings lie ahead of us. Our blessings aren't ahead of us. Our blessings are inside of us. God is looking for us to get connected with the unseen and introduce those blessings into our world. But the responsibility rests with us, not with him. Um. Ephesians 46 verse 10 says, God set the end before the beginning. God set the end before the beginning. What he's saying is, God has set your ultimate destination. God has set where it is that he wants you to end up. Then he makes known what is to come. It speaks about a plan. God has set the destination for your life, but God has also got a plan for your life. The destination is where you're going to end up. The plan is how you're going to get there. God will speak to you about your future. God will speak to you about your ultimate destination, but God won't speak to you about your plan. When God met with Joseph and gave Joseph a vision, he showed Joseph what it is that Joseph was to do. And he gave Joseph a vision of being a person of prominence and a person in position of power, a person in position of influence, a person who his family would go to and would bow down in front of them. He gave him an idea of what his future would look like. He gave him the design, but he never gave him the definition. He never said to him, you're going to be prime minister of this. But he gave him an idea about he, the fact that he would be a person of influence. He told him the destination. But he never told him the road map to get there. The reason he never told him the road map to get there was because God starts dealing with us where we are right now. And where you are right now is not who you're going to be when you reach your destination. And the difference between where you are right now and where you are at your destination is going to be significant. And the problem with it is, is that it's very easy to tell somebody you're going to be in prominence. It's very easy to tell somebody that you're going to be you're blessed in this way and blessed in that way and abundantly supplied for in this. And everybody jumps up and down and everybody celebrates and everybody gets excited and everybody looks forward to the future. But if he had said to Joseph, let me tell you about the plan. Joseph would have been, I'm not so sure I really want all of that at the end. Thank you very much. God gives us the destination, but the plan is designed to equip us to move into our future. Because where I am right now, I don't have what it takes to fulfill my ultimate destination. And so every step that I take, God is 
putting in, in place a training program for me. And the circumstances and the situations of life are demanding that I step into purpose. What is purpose? Purpose is all about discovery. It's about discovery of potential. And every time I step into discovery and I discover something more about who I am, and I discover something more about my gifting, and I discover something more about what he's equipped me to do, and I discover more about what's available to me in terms of blessings in life, and I step into that, I have just grown. My life has become more expansive. I've become bigger. I've become more mature. The plan that God has set for us is not something that's designed to keep us away from our ultimate destination. It's designed to equip us for our destination. Because what your destination is looking for is it's looking for somebody who is mature. It's looking for somebody who understands the kingdom. It's looking for somebody who lives by the kingdom. It's looking for somebody who understands that all of those things that, uh, that I need for life that exist to make me successful exist in the unseen realm. And I know how to introduce it into the natural realm. It's looking for mature people. And until we're at that stage, what it's saying is you just carry on in the plan for life because you're getting closer. And you're moving along. And every part of the journey is moving us somewhere that's getting us closer to the ultimate destination where he wants us to be. Amen. When God spoke to Joseph and he showed Joseph what he wanted, what he was saying to Joseph was this. Every step that you take, I will lead you and I will guide you. He doesn't show you the journey, but he'll show you the next step. The steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. What he's going to say to you is, Father, what do I do in this situation? Because I don't really know right now. And he's going to say, okay, this is what I want you to do. And I take a step. And I'm moving closer to my destination. And what do I do in this situation? And how do I deal with this? What's happening with that? Speak to me about this. What resources do I need to move into the next stage? And he says, do this. And I take that. I've got this decision to make. What do I do? Take. He teases us by the steps. He'll show you the future, but he won't show you the plan. Because along the plan, you're going to have some people who are close to you who are going to rob you of your coat. On your journey of life, you're going to find yourself enslaved to some things and you're going to think how did that happen i didn't think that was me i didn't think i'd end up there i might even find myself in jail but him finding himself in jail himself in jail put him at a place that introduced him to the king the problem with it is when we're in the pit when we're in slavery when we're when we're in jail everybody sits and goes well where's god is this god's plan What God's saying is, every time you find yourself in adverse conditions, sit and have a look because what it's doing is, it's directing you to purpose. What purpose is it directing me to right now? What is it introducing me to in my life that I can step into that's going to equip me for my future? Because when you overcome in an area of your life, you will always be victorious in that area of your life. It doesn't mean you won't have challenges in that area, but you'll know how to handle them because I've been there and I've done that. It's the things we tackle for the first time that become most problematic. God starts, God completes the end before he starts at the beginning. God completed your life before you were ever born. The moment that you were born was evidence of the fact that you were here to start something that's already been completed. As you move along the journey of life, as you move along God's plan that's leading you to your ultimate destination, you're going to find that there are a whole bunch of things along the way. It's not traps. They are not traps. It's training. What he's doing is he's using every one of those, those obstacles, every one of those challenges to introduce you to a dimension of your potential that you didn't know existed before. And suddenly, I'm using 8% of my potential. 12% of my potential, 24% of my potential. The more potential you grab a hold of, the more it positions you to be a person of influence. Every step that you take in understanding your purpose in a situation opens new doors for you. Every time you have an opportunity to take the gift that God has put on the inside of you and give it, an expre give it expression, Use your character and what he's given you. Understand who you are and liberate the full potential of that. Don't be mediocre. 
Don't be gray. Well, I just did the, I did the task. Everybody does the task. What he's saying is, step into something new. What's going to set you apart, what's going to make you the person who has influence is your gifting. Don't neglect it. Liberate its full potential. God is going to give you dreams. You might not understand how those dreams are going to happen. God might give you an ambition and an appetite for things. Those are good. Don't worry about how it's going to happen and don't try to plan it out. There are things that you have to leave to him and you have to recognize that and have confidence in the fact that he's written your book. And that as I take each step and as I move into the next chapter, what I have to do is have close enough relationship with him that I allow him to direct my paths so that I take the steps that he orders of me. And I walk into a potential and to a purpose that's closer to my destiny and walks me into what it is that he wants me to experience. Father, we just want to thank you that you're so good. I want to thank you, Father, that you've given all of us the opportunity to step into so much more that you've provided for us. I want to thank you, Father, that you created each one of our lives before we were ever conceived and that you have a perfect plan for us. I thank you, Father, that as we move to a place of intimacy with you, it takes that, that purpose and it begins to reveal it to us. I want to thank you, Father, not only did you give us a plan, but everything that we need in order to accomplish and fulfill that plan is made available to us. And all the resources necessary for accomplishment are sitting in heavenly places in the unseen realm. I thank you, Father, that you open our understanding and you let us see the full potential of what is available to us. I thank you that as we place demands on those things, it moves us closer. It grows our life. It makes it more expansive. And it positions us as people of influence for you and for the kingdom. We bless you for it now. Amen.